Climate change is the greatest threat facing humanity. The food industry accounts for in the region of 20 to 30% of greenhouse gas emissions. This comes from direct impacts of agriculture, but also the indirect effect of transporting the food, refrigerating the food, and also waste management. A large proportion, around 60% of the dietary induced carbon footprint is derived from meat. So we're talking about quite a considerable impact. There's been a lot of interest in the idea of reducing meat intake with a focus on climate change. But is it healthy to deprive the body of meat protein? And how much of a difference to the climate effort does it really make? Whilst reducing meat intake makes sense from an environmental perspective, given the high greenhouse gas emissions, we also need to consider the dietary aspects from a health perspective in terms of reducing meat intake. I research healthy aging and how we lose muscle mass and quality as we get older. Supporting strong muscles requires constant remodeling by producing muscle proteins from amino acids. This muscle protein synthesis is impaired in older people, but eating the right foods can help. And unfortunately, all the research suggests that animal protein is better for this function. And so we need to think about protein sources that are anabolic in terms of stimulating this muscle growth response. And protein derived from meat is one of these sources that has been shown to be particularly effective. So a couple of studies have shown that when ingesting meat-based protein, we're able to stimulate a greater muscle synthesis, so an anabolic response to that protein, compared to a soy protein. Now, this is likely dependent upon a series of different factors, namely a higher essential amino acid content of the meat, but also a full profile of all of the nine essential amino acids, and also the higher leucine content. Leucine not only acts as a substrate or a building block for muscle protein, leucine also acts as a signal, a bit like a traffic light in terms of switching on the muscle protein synthesis machinery to therefore build and remodel new muscle protein. It is possible to get the full profile of amino acids from vegetarian food, but this requires careful planning of specific combinations of plant protein foods. So from one standpoint, eating less meat is important from an environmental perspective. However, on the other hand, we still need to retain some meat in the diet in terms of muscle maintenance, particularly as we get older. So what should we do? Well, mathematical modeling might have the answer of how to balance the needs of our bodies and the planet. Researchers are working to calculate the dietary changes required to achieve both our nutritional requirements and meet the targets for reduced greenhouse gas emissions. A balanced approach that doesn't exclude meat eating altogether, but does reduce our national intake enough to limit the environmental impact is possible and likely to be more palatable and practical than any extreme approach. Climate change is the greatest health threat facing humanity. We absolutely must prioritise actions that reduce emissions. That means, among many other things, eating less meat. It's something we can all do. We can balance the immediate needs of our bodies with the future health of everyone, everywhere. <laughs>